time do you close? Now, we close now. Now is not a time. What time do you close? Generally around dark, at dark. You don't know what you're talking about, do you? Sir? I said, you don't know what you're talking about. Sixty-nine cent. And the gas. Y'all getting any rain up your way? What way would that be? I seen you was from Dallas. What business is it of yours? Where I'm from? Friendo? I didn't mean nothing by it. it didn't mean nothing. Just passing the time. Anton makes absolutely no eye contact when talking to the guy at the counter until he starts doing small talk. Anton then instantly makes strong levels of eye contact, significantly more than normal. When we're in communication, we make eye contact roughly 50% of the time when speaking and around 75% of the time when listening. He does much, much more than that. The lack of eye contact at the start shows that he doesn't see the shopkeeper as a threat, reflecting that he feels completely dominant and in control of the situation. He then turns incredibly confrontational and that's shown with his overbearing eye contact. Also, his throat tenses or swallows, which can be taken as a suppression of speech or as a suppression of a pacifying behavior, indicating that he's stressed. Now it could be either and I wouldn't want to say that it's definitely one over the other. He's either very emotionally affected by the shopkeeper asking him questions or he's suppressing himself saying something. If you don't want to accept that, I don't know what else I can do for you. Will there be something else? I don't know. Will there? <clears throat> Is something wrong? With what? With anything. Is that what you're asking me? Is there something wrong with anything? The shopkeeper gives off super submissive body language, showing that he's very afraid of Anton. He keeps diverting his eye contact to the ground when he challenges what Anton is saying. We do this as to appear non-confrontational, as to not provoke a reaction, which in caveman times might end up getting you killed. Eye contact is one of, if not the most important non-verbal cue we give off. Maintaining average levels of eye contact when offering a response to someone who is dominant may be taken by them as a challenge to them, as you aren't acting submissive. Anton then does a micro expression of a smile with his mouth and his brow tenses which is a strong sign that he's being genuine with his smile. The more synchronized the body language, the more likely they are to be genuine emotions. What I mean by this is that if they smile, does the rest of their face and the tone of their voice also indicate that the person is smiling as we smile not just with the mouth. Anton is amused by what the shopkeeper is saying. The shopkeeper is trying to act normally. He acts submissive to the dominance of Anton, but yet still can't ease the situation, which is why he tries to ask what's wrong. However, Anton isn't a normal person. He's a psychopathic killer, and that makes communication difficult. Will there be anything else? You already asked me that. Well, I need to see about closing now. See about closing? Yes, sir. What time do you close? Now, we close now. Now is not a time. What time do you close? Generally around dark, at dark. You don't know what you're talking about, do you? Sir? I said, you don't know what you're talking about. By Anton's tone of voice, you can tell that he's getting incredibly frustrated by the shopkeeper, trying to appease him. Now the shopkeeper is trying his best to calm the situation down and move the situation on in a normal way. But Anton doesn't think in that way. He thinks logically and gets frustrated when the guy repeats himself. He also does a pacifying behavior when he exhales, before saying the guy doesn't know what he's talking about. A pacifying behavior is the way our brain tries to release 
releases the buildup of stress and uses what's called the limbic system to pacify. This non-verbal cue shows that he's incredibly stressed by the shopkeeper's response. What time do you go to bed, sir? You're a bit deaf, aren't you? I said, what time do you go to bed? Oh. Somewhere around 9.30. I'd, I'd say around 9.30. I could come back then. Why would you be coming back? We'll be closed. Yeah, you said that. Well, I got to close now. You live in that house all back. The shopkeeper continues to exhibit submissive nonverbal cues. He distances with his eyes, which is the brain's way of putting distance between itself and a stressor, which in this case is Anton. Anton this whole time has been making incredibly strong eye contact, never really breaking it, which would be putting the shopkeeper under intense pressure. This is likely why the shopkeeper doesn't really make sense with anything he's saying. Like saying that he closes at dark and starts to close despite it being bright sunlight outside. Anton expects people to act in the incredibly calm and logical way that he does and gets frustrated when other people don't. Yes, I do. You lived here all your life? This is my wife's father's place uh, originally. You married into it. We lived in Temple, Texas for many years. Raised a family there in Temple. We come out here about four years ago. You married into it. That's the way you want to put it. Well, I don't have some way to put it. That's the way it is. When Anton finds out that the shopkeeper married into the business, he tenses his face and coughs. This is a strong sign of distress and shock. The shopkeeper does another distancing behavior when Anton says that he married into it, showing that again he's feeling very threatened by him despite the smile. What's the most you ever lost on a coin toss? Sir? The most you ever lost on a coin toss. I don't know. I couldn't say. Call it. Call it, yes. For what? Just call it. Again, the shopkeeper is feeling very, very threatened. He doesn't want to make eye contact with him and holds his eyes to the table. Also, when Anton flips the coin, he does another pacifying behavior. He sighs again out of frustration with the shopkeeper. For those of you that haven't seen this movie, he's flipping the coin for his life and he'll kill him if he calls the wrong side. I think that Anton is frustrated that he may have to kill this guy. He doesn't seem to care or emphasize with the shopkeeper, so he's not frustrated for him. Anton looks at the floor as well, which is uncommon for him during this scene. His baseline shows him as making strong eye contact. So when we see his baseline shift, there's obviously something that's caused that shift, which is the coin toss. Now, looking to the floor isn't just a sign of submission. It varies given the context, and I think here it's a sign of frustration. He's again frustrated that he might have to kill this guy if he calls the coin wrong. Well, we need to know what we're calling it for here. You need to call it. I can't call it for you. Well, it wouldn't be fair. I didn't put nothing up. Yes, you did. You've been putting it up your whole life. You just didn't know it. You know what date is on this coin? No. 1958. It's been traveling 22 years to get here. And now it's here. And it's either heads or tails. And you have to say, call it. More distancing and submissive behaviors from the shopkeeper. And also back to normal with the eye contact from Anton. One thing to note is the total lack of movement from Anton that reflects his mindset. He doesn't move much and when he does it's slow and deliberate. He's very cautious and is able to focus his attention solely on one thing. And he does that with the shopkeeper. It's unnerving the level of eye contact he makes and it's way above the average amount which gives off this creepy vibe. That and the ball haircut. Look, I'm need to know what I stand to win. Everything. How's that? You stand to win everything, call it. All right. Heads then.
Well done. Don't put it in your pocket, sir. Don't put it in your pocket. It's your lucky quarter. Where do you want me to put it? Anywhere not in your pocket. Or it'll get mixed in with the others and become just a coin. Which it is. Anton then congratulates the shopkeeper and raises his eyebrows in a sort of friendly way at him. Now this backs up what I said before about him not wanting to kill the man, but feeling compelled to because of his psychopathic philosophy that plays out throughout this movie. He believes that every decision we make has consequences, similar to Two-Face. So overall this scene was brilliantly acted. It's super tense and that's shown really well by Anton's total lack of movement and intense level of eye contact. This is also supported with the shopkeeper's visible but subtle distress levels that he gives off. So thank you so much for watching this video video guys if you did enjoy it please be sure to hit that like button and subscribe for more content and i'll see you in the next video thanks for watching